All right, Comic Skate Live is dead. Hey there, so Comic Skate Live is dead. I mean, really drink that in. Not only that, but Comic Artist Pro Secrets, it won't feature comic related material. I mean, think about that statement there. Comic Artist Pro Secrets, no comic. No artist, no pro, no secrets. So what you're going to get is something totally different. Now, if you're sitting there and your mind just snapped, I'm sorry. I'm sorry to do that to you. And if you're sitting confused and wondering about what you're being inundated with here, if you're wondering about the inception level madness and wanting to know whether or not you need a personal umbrella to keep the amphibians and reptiles from falling from the sky, you know, the cyber frogs from marching in, maybe the cats and dogs might start living together, well, yeah, I'm going to tell you about what's going on and more. Actually, when you're looking at this, too, this is the result of things like hashtag activism. I talked about this in the uh, very beginning when I was uh, looking at the pros and cons related to something like Comicsgate, balking at the idea that I could be included in hashtag campaigns. If you look at other types of activism like this, if you look at the failing of it, the failing is inherent inherently fracturing and fraying. All groups go through this if they go on long enough. And what you see, well, it's just something like this. You start focusing on the internal. Then you stop focusing on the external when doing it. You forget where the real problem lies. In fact, I mean, if I were talking about this right now, one thing that we've already omitted and that I haven't heard a lot of people talking about is why we're looking at Ethan Van Skyver, the channel. Why are we looking at subbed 2.4K and not a channel with, you know, 80 plus K? Well, that's because there was false flagging going on. Only people were too busy arguing with each other about what Comicsgate means to actually go out and cover that. You've had three channels flagged so far. It's done by people that are openly bragging about it. And instead of focusing on that, oh no, it has to be something that drives people away. Now all of this, it's been drama. It's been chaos. And I'm not going to cover the little flakes of drama leading up to here. In fact, if you want those, you can go on the live streaming channel, The Umbrella Guy. Make sure you're subscribed to that. But I'm not going to go into the blow-by-blow blow here. Instead, what I want to say is that this this has come because of people wanting to define Comicsgate as a specific thing. They want to see an idea that's made manifest in one rigid dynamic, and they don't want to see anything else at play. Now, that dynamic, it's really interesting because when some people define it, they seem to think that the comic industry, it's somehow going to respond positively somewhere down the road. For me... I don't see any kind of return to normality. I don't see me ever wanting a return to the big two after we've been insulted, in fact. I mean, if you are called, you know, an ist, a phobe, if you're called a Nazi and on, if the industry makes excuses for that by utilizing words like freelancer but allows it to play, I don't know why you continue to go there and continue to uh, to pick up their wares. I don't know what kind of nostalgia binds somebody to something to the point that you sacrifice self-dignity. But then again, what do I know on that? Apparently, I don't understand the definition enough. With this, really... People want to focus on product. And, you know, on that, for myself, I add professional as well. I do not believe in separation of the art from the artist. In fact, if we're going into that, no one would ever dare say the plumbing from the plumber. I mean, that would be absurd. You know, oh, well, he can fix your drain, but he might call you a Nazi while he's in your home. You would never, ever go for that. But somehow, with comic books, it's different. Now, some people out there, they heard this kind of stuff, you know, and like an Ethan Van Skyver. They actually tuned in. They heard what was going on. They heard that there were problems within the industry. They saw the, uh, the results of that. They saw the quality deterioration and on. They heard the consumers complaining. And they said, yeah, you know, I see that too. They also saw it in some of the things that they had been doing. You know, Ethan Van Skyver talks about it within this video. He saw that within his own actions. And he said, you know what? I'm down with that. I can be better. So he decided he would go 
then he would back that kind of movement because why wouldn't you? Why wouldn't you want something better? Also within this, you know, something that has become part of that as it's grown is calling out the uh, the things that the industry does as far as uh, going and discriminating against people because they vote a specific way, because they have wrong thinking on. Now, when these artists, they come out and support people that are wrong thinkers, that are uh, saying that the industry is wrong in something, well, they end up inherently blackballed as well. You know, you see them not welcome to the party anymore. But that's okay. Some of these artists, they're really big. And people like Ethan Van Skyver, he built one heck of an audience off of this and also off of Star Wars. Within that, when he built this, uh, one of the problems that he kept hearing is how you're not the leader. You don't speak for Comics Gate. You're not this. You're not the consumer and on. This kind of stuff, it was pointed at him. And so many other things have been pointed at him as well. It's like there's this dynamic telling people that you had to be here at a specific time. You have to believe things a specific way. It can't grow past a certain point. Now, this kind of stuff, too, we're not talking about uh, just ideas being thrown out. We're not talking about conceptualization of something. We're not saying comics gate is. It's more like saying, well, Ethan Van Skyver isn't. And people kept pointing that at him. Now, you can imagine the frustration that that would cause, because if it were pointed at me, that would frustrate me. I'm already taking the slings and arrows out from the outside, already having, you know, over 20 hit pieces with my name in it. But hey, let's have some internalized issues. Now, yesterday... We had all of this culminate into a debate wherein we saw Ethan Van Skyver and John Malin debate with I Love Comics and Unranked Chevron. They were on Ricada uh, Law and actually props to everybody that was on there. And within that, that thing, it went totally totally downhill. I mean, I thought that the points that came up on that, I thought that many of them were actually very insulting the way that they came across. And when I saw that, I thought that there's nothing good that can come from talking about this for pros. Because with pros, I mean, what exactly do you win within a debate like that? If the people over there, if you win against them, their followers and on, they're not going to support you probably anymore when they get mad there. Or there's going to people be people that don't like your tone or something you say and on. Pros, they have problems within that. But moreover, I think they just get tired of it. I think they get tired of hearing what they should be or what they are or what they have to be in order to. So Ethan Van Skyver said, yeah, I'm leaving Comicscape. I'm going to be Comicscape adjacent, but I've got to do what's best for me and what's best for my brand. Now, this brings up an interesting point that has caused a lot of friction, and that would be what Ethan had been referring to as Comicsgate 2.0. Now, this will now be all caps comics, but at one time. Ethan had basically talked about a shift in the dynamic wherein we still talk about the philosophical. We still talk about the problem, but we also add the actionable or an alternative. Now, for myself, I like the idea of having an alternative because I'm not going to back a thing that is out there continually insulting me. In fact, even if you want to look at certain things as small victories, if you want to say, hey, we pried this away, they had to make Vertigo a separate line or on, well, why would you back a company that gives you maybe a little nod but won't truly do anything? I mean, why would you continue to back that, knowing that at any time they're just one step away from disrespecting you again? Why not back something else? Ethan did a very good job of this. He set up something. He basically promoted all kinds of other artists on that stage. And people, they saw success at a level that was pretty much unheard of for small-level indie creators. And really, when you looked at the the glowing success that the larger uh, commodities had, wow. I mean, I thought they were impressive. With that, it comes more chaos. And with that... Of course, you have claims of Kingmaker and on. And I think after a while, people, they just burn out on that. They burn out on hearing it. They burn out on the the, uh, calls for that. So again, 
you accomplish a change in, I guess, semantics. You have somebody change the name, but also you push away somebody that was a pretty valuable ally there. For me, I think that's beyond absurd. Also, Ethan brings up something very interesting within his uh, video that I thought really does challenge the assertions that are being thrown out. So within it, he says he has not been with Comics Gay forever. You know, he joined in, and in a short time, you know, he had a lot of success. He brought in a lot of people within it, too. I'm adding that portion. But, you know, he wasn't one of those originals. So, you know, when he's going in... It wasn't his intention to co-opt a movement. Now, for myself, I haven't been covering this for over a year now. You know, I'm relatively new to this, too. So does that not make me comic skate either? I mean, for me, I want something more than just to sit around and incessantly complain about something. I want something more. I want an alternative. I want artists that feel like they can market to me in this. And I want people to have their own voice. I want people that can go out. They can offer whatever they want. And, you know, the customer, they can decide on that. But also within this, people can build their own platforms. They can go and they can showcase that and they control that. They control the fate of that and they control the speech of that and on. Is that not Comicsgate? Because if that's not Comicsgate, then I guess I'm not Comicsgate, much like so many other people. But anyhow, you watch the video. You let me know about what you think on this. And like I said, you know, when I first started out on that, I did not like the idea of a hashtag and joining in with that because I know how this stuff goes. I know about the fraying and on. There are so many studies that talk about this and they talk about the failures within that paradigm. And that's what we're seeing here, in my opinion. People may see this as some kind of separation and success. But all I see within this is failure of part of a model that will lead to more. But anyhow, you tell me what you think. Also, if you like this kind of content, check out the links within the description. There's a Patreon and a PayPal link. And make sure to like, subscribe, and check out the live streaming The Umbrella Guy. I know that's hard to remember. I went for the hardest topic I could actually pull up. No, if you want to check out this stuff, definitely check that out. But make sure that you leave comments. And as always, thank you. I very much appreciate you showing up time and again.